as I said before, my name is Charlotte Tross. I'm the Director of Sales Education with New Chapter. And tonight's presentation is all about how we can do more than just survive, how we can really thrive in today's environment. Um, and gosh, that's so much, it sounds so hard, right? I mean, seriously, we are doing it all these days, right? We're teaching, we are, you know, running around, you know, trying to stay healthy, stay fit, take care of our bodies, have careers, have children, have families. And man, it is so easy to feel overwhelmed sometimes, isn't it? Um, I, I totally understand that feeling. And so tonight, what I really wanna do is connect. I wanna connect on the things that we can do together to change the way that we are operating day to day and really look at some of the things that, that may be holding us back, especially in our nutrition and, and how we can move forward. Because isn't that what it's all about? Like moving forward, getting better, making progress? I, I absolutely think so. So let's get started together. And again, thank you for being here. So women are facing new challenges, right? We're navigating personal challenges, professional challenges, social change. Um, women's contributions are evident to society. You know, we have lots of us working. Lots of us are working moms. Lots of us are getting educations and holding degrees. And lots of us are going into STEM occupations with math and science. And we're really making these large contributions to society, but we're also doing it while juggling everything else, right? And we really want to support the modern woman and the goals that she is striving for. And that's so important um, as we move forward. So let's take a look at every age and every life stage is really going to present its challenges to us, right? First of all, one of the things that I think women tend to worry about the most um, with their bodies is bone loss. Bone loss tends to be a huge discussion point when we're talking about women's health overall, right? I mean, osteoporosis rates are through the roof. Osteopenia seems to be coming out of your doctor's mouth when you go and you're saying, what can I do to stop this train of moving and really start to replace some of the calcium I may have already lost. So we're gonna talk about that tonight. So get ready if you have calcium questions, we're gonna have that. You know, 73% of Canadians reported feeling stressed and this was before the pandemic started. I think a lot of us can say that we're feeling stressed right now, that there is a lot of stress in the air. And so one of the things we're gonna talk about is how stress affects your body and how we can move towards a place of thriving despite being stressed and what kind of herbals may help us to cope with stress better. So that's gonna be exciting as well. You know, hormonal imbalance. You know, women experience menopausal symptoms that disrupt their lifestyle. I totally understand that. And I also understand that with hormone imbalance, you can actually have, you know, like with estrogen disruption. So women tend to lose estrogen as they get older, right? And that affects your hormones. It can affect your bone loss. It can affect mood swings. It can, I mean, it just really affects every single facet of our life. So we're going to talk about hormone balance as well. And we're also going to talk about aging gracefully because how we age is how we move forward. And there are a lot of obstacles against us right now. And I think we all could use some support in the healthy aging area. So let's talk today about, um, I, I represent a company called New Chapter, um, and we formulate for our friends and for our families. What does that mean? So it means that we walk the walk and we talk the talk. So we create products that we use. And it's so cool because the women that you saw on the first slide of this actually all work at New Chapter. Um, we actually use our own employees as uh, our models in some of our campaigns because we really truly believe that what we're doing is making a huge difference in not only how we feel, but also that we're proud to represent this brand. Um, you know, when we create a new supplement, we really try to follow our 10 principles of formulation to bring light to the industry, to bring joy, to make a contribution that's something that no one has seen before, to do no harm. This is one that we got because doctors often say, you know, they do no harm. You know, we don't want to use harsh chemical solvents. There's so many harsh chemical solvents being used in the world today. And we thought if you're taking a natural product, why would you do that? Why would you put a harsh chemical solvent in a natural product? It makes zero sense to us. 
which is also why five is to use common sense. We acknowledge tradition. We also acknowledge science, which is super important because sometimes things have been around for thousands of years, but they haven't been validated yet. So we look at both traditional and we also look at science so that we can connect the two to create things that maybe people haven't seen before, which is really exciting as well. So when we create a product, it is truly a new chapter. So when you think about your food, right, what are you actually getting? I think this is a really interesting question because when we talk about food, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard the adage, you are what you eat, right? Um, and I would totally be chocolate. But anyway, <laughs> um, the truth of it is, is that you are what you absorb. So every time you eat anything, you actually have to pay a tax. I call it the digestive tax and you got to pay the digestive tax. You got to pay your stomach. So what happens is, is that you actually break down your nutrients and some of them you get and some of them you don't. So when you're talking about iron, which is so important for women who are menstruating, right? A um, hundred grams of spinach is going to provide you with about 2.1 to 2.7 milligrams of iron, right? And you're like, well, Charlotte, that doesn't sound like too much and because it's not. But then guess what? You still have to pay the digestive tax. And what a study said is that you actually only get 2% of that iron. So you only get 2% of that 2.1 milligrams of iron and you're like, holy cow, I think I might need more iron than that, right? Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about one of our principles to help you with your overall digestion, but also to help you give your body nutrients in a form that your body can recognize. And we call it fermentation, right? Everybody calls it fermentation, but we love fermentation. So how fermentation works when you have cow's milk right if you have kids you know cow's milk is not one of the first foods that you want to give your baby why it's really really hard to digest so you get like exorcist baby it's bad don't don't give your baby cow's milk but one of the first foods that doctors actually recommend that you give to your baby is yogurt and yogurt is you know, broken down by this fermentation process. So it's super gentle on your stomach and it's super gentle on a baby's stomach. So what's the difference between milk, which is the starter and yogurt, which is the finished product? And the answer is fermentation. So we just apply the same thing to our nutrition. We apply this to iron and B vitamins and C, and we wanted you to be able to get your nutrition in a form your body would recognize, which is why we ferment it. So I know a lot of people are like, Charlotte, can I just get all my nutrition from food? Um, yeah, you could. It's just not easy to do, right? First of all, we live in a pretty busy world where we're more likely to eat standing up. And I know I'm totally guilty of just eating the leftovers off of my kid's plate and then just moving on with it. Um, and so that's not a great way to get nutrition, right? But sometimes you have to look at the amount of food that you have to eat as well to get the nutrition that your body needs. If you're pregnant, okay, you want to get iron and you're like, yeah, I'll eat a steak, right? But here's the deal. A nine ounce steak contains about six milligrams of iron. Even if you absorb 18%, which is what they say people absorb from you know, their iron, what they would get is a little over a milligram. So to get your daily value of iron from food during pregnancy means you have to eat 40 ounces of steak. 40 ounces. That's like two and a half pounds of steak. That's a lot of steak. And so we know that that's just not going to happen. So we wanted to create a multivitamin that would make up for some of these nutritional gaps that we're getting because also remember that our food is less dense, nutrient dense now than it was in the 1970s. So the apple that you had today was not like the apple that you, your grandma had in the 1970s, right? And the reason is, is because we have a lot of different ways that we process food today. We make food for yield, not for nutrition. So we're making more food as opposed to food that is like really dense, like, like that apple and malic acid, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, like it's different now. In fact, you'd have to eat eight oranges today to get the same nutrition that you had in orange in the 1970s. So again, I think that we can all see that we probably need to up our micronutrient levels. And micronutrients are super cool. They're like your B vitamins, your C vitamins, your D vitamins. 
But why should you choose a fermented multi? Well, first of all, I want you to take a look at these pictures, right? On the left, you see isolated iron before it was fermented. And on the right, you see probiotic cultured fermented dried iron. And the difference is, is that what happens is, is that we have Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a fancy name for brewer's yeast, right? And it munches down, it munches down on that nutrient and it incorporates it into its cell structure. When it incorporates it into its cell structure, it becomes part of that yeast. And I know, hold on, we'll cut, I promise, we're gonna come to the yeast thing, guys, hold up but incorporates it as a part of the yeast, right? And your body goes, oh my gosh, brewer's yeast. I know what to do with this. I recognize this, this is awesome. And it totally takes in that nutrition in a form that it can recognize, which is awesome. Now, everyone immediately, I say the word yeast and everyone's like, ah, not the yeast beast, right? Totally feel you there. So I'm not talking about candida, okay? So do you remember the 1990s when like all bacteria was bad, you had like good germs. You didn't have like good germs and bad germs like you do now because that's where probiotics really came in. Well, funnily enough, there are good yeast and bad yeast, okay? And a good yeast would be Saccharomyces cerevisiae or Saccharomyces boulardii, but a bad yeast is an invasive yeast that we don't like, like candida, okay? And so when I talk about yeast as a, like, as a fermentation process, I'm talking about good yeast. And your body needs good yeast to actually set good microbial foundations in your gut. And that's fantastic. So not only are you getting the benefits of the nutrients that your body can absorb and recognize, on top of that, you are getting a foundation for your microbiome so that your digestion actually is feeling pretty good as well. So that's awesome as well. So that's another reason that we love to ferment. Now, here's the crazy part. In our 55 plus, which is one of our latest fermented multivitamins, one of the things that we were able to show is that it stimulates neurite outgrowth, okay? Now, I know, it, going back to the biology thing, but basically what's happening is, is it's helping your brain communicate with itself. So you know those days when you just feel sharp, you're just like, man, I am on it today. I can remember all the different provinces, like I am on it. But <laughs> what's happening is, is that your brain is communicating with itself really well. And there's two things that can really make it do that. One are things that stimulate your right outgrowth and the other are essential fatty acids. So the cool part is, is that R55 plus fermented multivitamin gives you nutrition that you might be missing out on, like those really coveted C and D vitamins. And then you also get um, that microbiome balance from the fermented product. On top of that, now it's also stimulating um, your brain communicating with itself. That's a lot for a multi to do. This multi is a heavy lifter, right? I mean, come on. And guess what? and there's more. Um, so when we look at why do we add herbs to a multivitamin? So while 23% of Canadians take a multivitamin, um, the herbal supplementation is actually much lower. And here's why we eat heart herbs at New Chapter. First of all, um, in the principles of traditional Chinese medicine, which I am hugely fond of, um, we believe in starting with the smallest possible dose of an herb in order to see benefit from it, right? I think that in today's society, we've gotten really big on this mega dosing idea. I think that's really dangerous because where does the arms race end, right? Like, first of all, your body usually can't even absorb that much. And second of all, like, we really want to give you thoughtful formulation at New Chapter. And that's where our thoughtful formulation really comes into play is with these herbs that are all formulated by a master herbalist. And we have different blends. And each multivitamin, depending upon your life and age and um, your life stage overall, is going to deliver you, you herbal complement support that you're going to be able to have incorporated into your multivitamin as well. So it's really incredible. One of my favorite blends here is the digestive support blend, which features organic aloe, peppermint. It's very calming to the stomach. And because, you know, almost 70% of us have digestive issues, I think we can all use a little bit of support in this area. And having a fermented multivitamin that has a digestive support blend is a great foundational start. So discover our fermentation advantage at New Chapter. We have an Every Woman's One Daily Multi, it's one per day. We have an Every Woman's One Daily Multi Plus, um, 40 plus, and an Every Woman's One Daily Multi 55 plus. And people say to me, Charlotte, all the time, okay, Charlotte, can I take 
the 55 plus if I'm not 55? And I say, absolutely. I take the 55 plus because it has one of my absolute favorite ingredients in the whole world in it, which is called astaxanthin. So hold tight because we're going to talk all about astaxanthin in just a minute and why I'm so in love with it. So how much calcium is in your food? All right. So again, we're going back to the idea of our food trying to be our medicine, like Hippocrates said, and really um, getting our nutrition from food. But one cup of spinach has, take a guess, how many milligrams of calcium? Take a guess. 30 milligrams of calcium. But remember, like I said earlier, you got to pay that digestive tax, right? You got to pay it. So what you actually get is 12 milligrams of calcium absorbed. So let's go to milk, right? Because everyone's like, milk does the body good, good for your bones, right? Right. Okay. So one cup of milk, does it deserve the hype? 276 milligrams of calcium, impressivo, right? But what you actually get is... 89 milligrams of calcium absorbed, which means that your full day of calcium requires you to eat all of this food on the right-hand side. I know it's kind of shrunk down, but let me break it down for you. That's about half a block of cheese right there, and I love my cheese, but that's a lot of cheese. And then you have to eat that big old cup of yogurt, a couple of heaping handfuls of spinach, a whole head of broccoli, and don't forget the sardines because sardines have pin bones in them, which makes them an excellent calcium source. But I am saying no. Charlotte Tross is saying no to sardines. If you like them, you can totally have mine. But I would rather get my calcium in another way. And we certainly need it because 80% of osteoporosis sufferers are women. When you look at the left and you look at the right, you can see the difference between healthy bone and osteoporotic bone. And I know that people think that they get enough calcium from their diet, but the average Canadian diet supplies between 500 and 700 milligrams of calcium per day. So that leaves us with a deficit about 700 to 800. All right. The crazy thing is, is that people think that they'll just drink more milk, right? But in a 12 year Harvard study of 78,000 women, so that's not a small study. Those who drank milk three times a day actually broke more bones than women who didn't. And vegans actually have a 10% higher risk of bone fracture. And then guess what guys, because I'm about to change your calcium world here. If you take too much calcium, it can really be harmful for your body. Let me explain. When you take too much vitamin C, um, you're supposed to take about 250 milligrams of vitamin C at a time. Your body actually can't absorb much more than that at a time. But if you take 1,000 milligrams at a time, your body, it's water soluble and your body just excretes it, okay? No harm, no foul. But with calcium, it's totally different. If you take too much calcium, the calcium can actually get stored in your arteries. And if it gets stored in your arteries, you can start to see calcification of the arteries. And calcification of the arteries can lead you to having a heart attack. So it was noticed that people who were taking 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day or more were more likely to have a heart attack. So we have to supplement what we need, that 700 to 800 milligrams, not mega dose it. We have to find a safe and effective way for us to supplement our calcium. And we really want to do it in the best way possible, right? And so let's talk about what the best way possible is. It's to choose plants, not rocks. Yes, most calcium that's out there actually comes from limestone rock. So I want you to imagine going out, buying a pack of chalk and just not on right into it. Doesn't sound very good, right? And it doesn't probably sound like your body could absorb it very well either, right? Because we don't need a lot of rocks, right? We're not like, well, I want to go out to the garden. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen, right? So plants make a lot more sense. There are over 6,500 types of red algae in the world, and we chose a very special one. We call it lithothamine algae. And the reason that we chose lithothamine algae for our bone strength take care calcium product is because First of all, it's really calcium dense. So our lithothamine gives you 12% more whole food calcium per gram than algus calcareus, which is a different type of red algae. It's pure. So we source um, our red algae from Iceland, which has some of the purest waters around. And let me explain why that's super important. So what happens is, is that we think of algae as a plant and most plants gain nutrition from their root structure, which is under the ground. So people think because the algae is attached to the ocean floor, it must be getting its nutrition from the ocean floor, right? 
Not so. Algae actually takes its nutrition from the water that surrounds it. So that's why you want to make sure that your algae is really sourced from clean waters. And that's why we source it off the coast of Iceland. But we also want to make sure that it's sustainably sourced because at New Chapter, we are all about sustainability. We are all about supporting this earth and this planet and protecting it. And we are not going to sacrifice the earth so we can make a buck. We're just not willing to do it. That's why we only make one type of fish oil. We'll get there in a minute, but I'm just telling you, we only make one type of fish oil, and that's because it's the only one that we feel is truly sustainable. But the same thing with our lithothamian algae. A lot of people will trawl the ocean and not track where they go and over harvest the, the, uh, the calcium, and that means it's harmful to the environment and harmful to the sea life that depends on that. So what happens is, is that we actually partnered with an agency that says, hey, First of all, the way that you are harvesting your lithothamian is sustainable. It's not harming the ocean. We meticulously map the floor to make sure that we are not over harvesting, which is so important. And finally, the science. So lithothamian has been the subject of many studies, including studies, of course, for bone health, but also for joint health for heart health. And you're like, that makes it like a three in one, right? You're getting bone, heart, and joint support just by taking one type of calcium. And if you take nothing away from today, we add another ingredient into our bone strength take care that I want to talk to you about today, which is called K2. Okay. Look, you say to me, Charlotte, I, I, I hear you, right? Calcium, important, bone health, important. But I, you know, I, I take a limestone calcium. I'm pretty sure it's working for me. I feel good. I feel ya. I feel ya. So if you take nothing away from today is please, please add K2 to your regimen because K2 does something super cool. Whereas D3 helps you absorb the calcium into your bones, K2 acts as a traffic director that helps guide the calcium into your bones where you need it and away from your arteries where you don't need it. So there was actually a study that was shown that if you took K2, it could actually start helping the calcification of the arteries that may already be happening. So please, if you're not gonna take bone strength take care, which I personally think is one of the best calciums out there because it's that three in one bone joint and heart health, it reduces the risk of osteoporosis, it includes the D3 and the K2, please, 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 please take a K2 with your calcium. It will make all the difference in the world. All right, let's talk about microbiome balance. I am all about this. So like I said earlier, 74% of us have problems with our digestion. And what people always say to me is, is like, oh, Charlotte, it's just like I have a stomach ache. It doesn't really affect any other part of my body. And I'm like, guys, we have to quit doing this. We have to quit thinking of our body as all these separate systems. Like, oh, you know, my joints hurt and that's not affecting any other part of my body. Or, oh, my digestion's not so great, but that's not affecting any other part of my body. Your body is connected. Your body is a whole system, right? And every single part of it is important and can affect other parts of it. So if your digestion is not right on, your mood could be affected and your inflammation systems in your body could be affected. Everything could be affected by this. So we've got to get our microbiome balanced. And the best way that I've found to do that is with probiotics. So when you're looking at 90% of all diseases being traced back to the gut and the health of the microbiome, we see how important our digestion is. And also because we want to, you know, thrive, right? We don't want to just survive. We want to thrive. We want to get better, right? And 90% of all serotonin is produced in your gut. Okay, so it's a feel good, right? And you want to feel good. So by supporting your gut, you're supporting your brain health as well and your mood health, and that's gonna make a difference to how you feel as well. So unfortunately, when you have disruptions and dysfunction in the myocarbiome, you may be suffering from things like obesity, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and people are like, wait a minute, Char, I thought all that was hereditary. But funnily enough, some of the research that's coming out today is actually saying that 
autoimmune diseases are not being passed down by our DNA inheritance, but by inheriting our family's microbiome. Because who do we eat like? We eat like our parents, right? Who do we drink the same water as? Our parents. You know, so we're seeing the same lineage happen because we're establishing the same microbiomes. Um, and I think that that's a really important thing to look at. When you're choosing a probiotic, it's important to know that all probiotics are not the same. When you look at a label, you're probably going to see this long laundry list of strains, right? And you're like, oh, that looks good. I got like 20 different strains in that bad boy. But here's the deal, okay? First of all, just because it says that B breath A was in one formula and B breath A was in a different formula doesn't mean it's the same B breath A. Okay. So let me explain how this works. Let's throw it back to, back, um, to biology class for a second. When you look at Bifidobacterium brevae, you are looking at a species. And to be listed as a species, you only have to share 97% of a DNA match. And people are like, whoa, 97 is pretty good. It's like an A, right? Hold on there, Turbo. We got something to say. So 97% DNA match it means that there's a 3% difference between that and a different B. Breve that might be used in a different formulation or might have been used in a different study. Now, considering that humans and chimpanzees share 99% of their DNA match, that 1% makes a pretty big difference, right? So how big of a difference does a 3% make in bacteria? And the answer is a pretty darn big difference. So how do we know that the same strain that was used in clinical research is the one that we are finding in our probiotic? And that is where you look for strain-specific probiotics. So these specific strains are usually highly researched. And what's the difference is, is that they have these little initials afterwards, like this is B. Breve, BRO3. And while these two strains share 97% DNA, the BRO3 is actually associated with clinical research. And because that clinical research is verifiable, you can be like, I'm getting the exact same DNA verified strain that was used in this research that was showing all of these cool results, right? Awesome. So you want to find that strain-specific probiotic because it's DNA verified and it really gives you an assurance of quality when you're talking about a probiotic. And here's what it can do. What happens is, is that, first of all, you have to pick probiotics that work well with each other. I know. You see those long laundry lists of like 20 or 30 probiotics, but the first thing that comes to mind is, do they all get along? Do they work well together? Because you know, humans don't always get along. Animals don't always get along. Bacteria also don't always get along. It's a rule of bacteriology. Not all of them get along. So you have to make sure that you are choosing strains that work well together. And when you combine these strain-specific L. plantarum LPO1 and B. breve BRO3, even though it was an account of 5 billion, and I know everyone's like, wait a minute, Charlotte, 5 billion sounds low. It's supposed to be like 50 billion or 100 billion. Okay, hold on. That is clinically dose matched to the research that was done on these strains. And I, I always ask the question, like, where does the arms race end? I mean, if it's really gonna be 50 billion, why not 100 billion? Why not 200 billion? Not, why not 500 billion? And the thing is, is that you get into these crazy and astronomical numbers, and what we really need is research to clarify why we need the number that we're getting. And if the research says you need 5 billion, the new chapter is going to deliver 5 billion. Why would we give you any more? And we certainly wouldn't give you any less. And what happened when you combine these two strains in a count of 5 billion is that, that you saw improved digestion parameters. You saw a down regulation of inflammation causing cytokines. You saw an up regulation of inflammation balancing cytokines. And what you also saw is research showing that it could be a promising therapy for IBS. And you saw many improved digestive parameters. And that's really, really cool because that's what you're looking for in a digestive supportive probiotic, right? And there's more to probiotics than just probiotics. Again, when you look at labels, sometimes you're gonna see these really long, impressive lists. You may even see nutrients listed, but what we're looking for are those strain-specific probiotics, and we're looking for the clinically verified research that you can tie to it. So why are probiotics greater than yogurt? I know, again, we're still trying to do that, right? I, I love the idea of getting all of my nutrition from food. 
but unfortunately yogurt is actually not the best source of probiotics. It's a source of probiotics, but it's not the best source of probiotics. And that's because there was a review of 92 different probiotic products that they're sold in the grocery store and they didn't find any benefits to them demonstrated in clinical trials like there was no point i mean while it's probably good for your body you know to eat good fermented foods it wasn't providing that probiotic content that would make a difference in digestive parameters and you know also a lot of yogurts are filled with sugar so the average flavored yogurt has about 25 grams of sugar. And considering that the average candy bar has 22 grams of sugar and the sugar recommendation for an entire day is 25 grams, that means that I would rather have a Snickers bar. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Um, I gave up sugar a while ago, but, um, but I still think about it. <laughs> so when you eat that much sugar, guess what you do too? you feed the yeast beast like we were talking about earlier so the yeast beast again we're talking about candida albicans we're talking about an invasive opportunist yeast that causes fatigue and weight gain and joint pain and digestive discomfort and guess what if you're going to try and fight the yeast beast the best thing that you can fight the yeast beast with is another type of yeast a beneficial yeast, a good yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. So the cool thing is, is that when you fight bad yeast with good yeast, you get a really awesome effect because the Saccharomyces boulardii crowds out the candida albicans and it crowds it out so much that it dies off, which is fantastic. So what's happening is, is that Saccharomyces boulardii is a great candida fighter, which is why we actually have it on the front of our um, probiotic that it's great for helping with candida. Um, a lot of people come to the health food store looking because they, for a probiotic, because they have been given antibiotics. And when you're on antibiotics, it wipes out all of the good bacteria in your body as well as the bad bacteria. So what happens is, is that the opportunistic candida albicans that always lives within your gut system starts to go, well, hey, what's going on? I'm just going to take over this party. And we don't want that to happen. So we really need to fight it with a good yeast. And so many probiotics are missing a beneficial yeast. And that's why at New Chapter, we created Probiotic All Flora. It has three essentials that you need for digestive parameters. Prebiotics, so that's the food that feeds the probiotics so that they can be happy and healthy and thriving in your gut. The probiotics themselves in those clinically studied dosages, as well as being DNA verified so that you can tie them back to the clinical research and postbiotics. Postbiotics are super cool. So what happens is, is when probiotics like set up shop, they actually create byproduct, fancy name for waste. And that waste is actually super good for your microbiome overall. And because it's so good for your microbiome, it sets like this healthy foundation for your gut. And that actually helps to perpetuate a lot of good um, bacteria and a lot of good foundation within your gut itself. So postbiotics, it's where it's at. And one daily capsule is more powerful than yogurt and it doesn't have the sugar with it. But a lot of women may be experiencing um, some cramping or some side effects of their period. Um, I think we've all been there. Um, you know, it's crazy because the PMS zone can last for up to two weeks prior to getting your period. Your period can last for about a week. You recover for about a week and then you go right back into your cycle, right? And one of the things is, is it can really throw you off your game, right? So we could all use a little bit of PMS support, right? I think that's really important. I think we can use support for those times when we are menstruating. So it's crazy because Japan, South Korea, and Indonesia all give women menstrual leave, which is time off from work to help cope with their pain um, associated with their period. So I say we start working towards that, ladies, um, <laughs> because who can use that? But one of the other battles that we are tending to fight is losing the bacterial battle. Um, about 50 
50 to 60% of women will develop urinary tract infections within their lifetime, and UTIs account for 25% of all infections. And so UTIs also, of course, occur more in women than men at a ratio of eight to one, and they are super uncomfortable. So a lot of people go to try and prevent UTIs from happening by taking cranberry juice, right? Happens all the time. And here's the thing, if you have a UTI, Cranberry juice is a great choice. Why? There are um, things within cranberry juice that actually stop the bacteria from adhering to your urinary tract walls. And that means that you can actually um, hopefully get through your UTI faster. Now, sometimes, of course, you have to go to the doctor. I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor. I'm just saying that that's the way that cranberry juice works when you have a UTI. But what about UTI prevention? Because I don't want to get one in the first place because they're super uncomfortable, right? Well, in studies, it was shown that cranberry juice cannot be recommended for UTI prevention because it does nothing to help prevent the UTI from happening. What does help are probiotics because probiotics could actually help us protect against UTIs because if they colonize within the vagina, what can happen is, is that they can make it hard for that bacterial overgrowth to happen in the first place, meaning you could prevent a UTI. So does the bacteria actually get where you need it? So the problem is, is that most oral probiotics do not survive to colonize where you need them within the vagina, okay? And so what happens is, is that that can mean that you get vag um, vaginal bacterial overgrowth, which can lead to vaginosis, UTIs, discomfort, that yeast overgrowth we were talking about. So we needed to find a women's probiotic product that it has clinically verified and studied strains that are DNA verified to match that. And so we went and found a probiotic called L-Acidophilus LA14. And so keep in mind, this is not just any acidophilus. This is LA14 and L-Ramnosis HN001. And when this pair is combined, they were able to survive the digestive tract and flourish in the vagina where you need them. And that is helping to help with your women's daily balance. So it's verified counts, verified strains, verified action shown to colonize the vagina where you need it and delivering the same amount that you would find in that clinical research. And we also added an herbal complement to it because like I said, we heart herbs. And so we added chaste berry, um, maca, and lavender to it. So chaste tree is known for helping to normalize the ratio of progesterone to estrogen, support PMS symptoms, and also um, help with like mood overall. Maca shown to be helpful in battling with anxiety, symptoms of depression, particularly in menopausal women. Sometimes women ask me like, do I have to be getting my period to take the women's balance? And I'm like, oh, heck no. This is for everyone. And I think that the herbal complement really shows that because chase tree, maca, lavender, useful for all of us. So awesome. Let's talk about building your building blocks for your best you. Um, you know, we're all trying to age gracefully, right? I think it's an important part of aging um, to feel good about how you're aging. I feel like it just keeps getting better. I gotta be honest with you. Like, you know, uh, my 30s were awesome. My, my 20s were awesome, but my 30s were even more awesome. And so now I feel as I'm going into my 40s, I have a lot to look forward to, but I still want to keep my energy levels. I still want to keep my skin health. I still want to keep my metabolism, right? And that's where I think nutrition and, you know, supplementation can really help because one of the things that I tend to notice about, um, you know, health in general is that people only pay attention to it as a reactive um, thing, not a proactive thing. And that's why I think that paying attention to your health and taking supplementation to keep what you have and what you're enjoying is the best possible solution. And one of the things that's super hot right now is collagen, right? And people are always asking me, they're like, Charlotte, collagen really cracked up for to what it's supposed to be. And I say, absolutely. So first of all, you can make your own collagen. You have what we call endogenous collagen, which is the way that your body generates collagen naturally. But guess what? 
as you age, you're going to make less collagen. So there are 28 different types of collagen, but the most common that you find in your body are types one, two, and three. And collagen is found in your skin, your bones, your muscle, your tendons, your organs, your nails, your connective tissues, and even in your eyes. So I think that we can safely say that we really need collagen to support the collagen that we're no longer making as we age. And man, that collagen clock is ticking. So what causes our body to deplete our levels of collagen? Well, first of all, natural aging. When does that depletion start? As early as 21, and it decreases even more after menopause. So we are projected to consistently lose 1% of our collagen each year after our mid-20s, which means I could use a little help in that area. High sugar consumption. Um, a high sugar diet encourages blood sugar to attach to proteins, and that actually can weaken your collagen overall. Let me give you a little tip from the pros here. This is where micronutrients become super important as well. One of the co um, collagen helpers is vitamin C. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but vitamin C is essential to helping you not only produce, but also use collagen when you take it. So it's really important because remember vitamin C is water soluble and if you don't use it, you lose it. So you need to keep having good micronutrient levels, which again, is why you wanna take a great multivitamin. Um, but also because a lot of people are like, oh, well I drank orange juice and that's really good for vitamin C. And I'm like, hey, guess what? Did you know that vitamin C actually competes with sugar to enter your white blood cells? And that means that you're less likely to get, yes, that vitamin C that you're trying to get, Yes, that is totally the way that works. So try and take your vitamin C without sugar. Um, smoking, it's not good for you. Ruins your collagen, ruins your skin, don't do it. Um, and sunlight, sunlight's good. It gives you vitamin D, right? But it also can help your collagen to break down faster. So we need a little collagen support. Where can we find it? So first of all, um, again, remember at New Chapter, all about sustainability. And you have to really be aware of the unsustainable collagen source. So a lot of people talk a lot about marine collagen, but our fish sources in you know, our oceans are becoming rapidly depleted. I mean, seriously depleted. Um, overfishing is happening. They're shutting down um, fishing before seasons are over in Peru because, you know, I thought this was such an interesting story. A lot of fish oils source their anchovies um, off the coast of Peru. And they actually had to close the fishing season early this year in January because the fishermen who depend on this fish actually went on strike. They went on strike and they marched all the way to you know, this headquarters where they were trying to prove the point that if you don't stop overfishing, we will have nothing for next year. We will have nothing for our future. So please shut it down. I mean, it's incredible that you know, our fishermen who depend on that income and the fish for survival were begging for the government to shut down fishing to save the oceans. And that's why we have to make sustainable choices. That's why we have to keep fighting and always demand to know where your products are coming from. So no, um, you know, what happens is, is that fish collagen often comes from cod and North Sea cod stocks are falling. Um, they've fallen over 31% since 2015. They're continuing to fall. So we did not want to contribute to that. So we really loved the idea of a vegan collagen source, but it doesn't exist without being genetically modified and you know or you know made from bacteria and we just said to ourselves no we, we, we're gonna do this the right way right like if we're going to source animal sourced collagen we're going to make sure that it's sustainable we're going to make sure that the animals are treated humanely we're going to make sure that it gives you the type of collagen that your body can absorb and use and that's exactly what we wanted to do at new chapter so you want to look for a hydrolyzed collagen when you get a hydrolyzed collagen collagen. It basically means that it's been broken down into smaller peptides, which is easier for your body to absorb. And there's studies that suggest that more than 90%, that's pretty high considering your digestive tax, but more than 90% of hydrolyzed collagen is digested and available as small peptides in the bloodstream within one hour of taking it. So that's another reason that we love collagen, right? And it really enhances your skin health. 
And women aged 35 to 55 who took two and a half to five grams of collagen daily for eight weeks showed significant improvement in their skin elasticity, and they had fewer wrinkles, and they had less dryness, and it was wins for everybody, so collagen for all, but let's make sure that it's grass-fed, pasture-raised, um, cage-free chickens, humanely treated animals that are sustainably sourced and ethically sourced, and that is how you can feel good about collagen. We make two different types. One is called Collagen Glow, and um, I love this one for skin health. It gives you 12 grams of that hydrolyzed collagen, and it includes a water-soluble sea buckthorn. Ladies, if you have not heard of sea buckthorn, let me tell you why I'm such a huge fan. Not only is it great for skin health, not only is it a great source, a naturally rich source of vitamin C, but sea buckthorn also is great for mucosal membranes within the body. If you're looking for a great omega-7 supplement, you're going to look for a sea buckthorn. And it's great, especially if women are experiencing vaginal dryness to help with those mucosals. And it's fantastic. So again, just another side benefit nod to the good old sea buckthorn. We also, if you decide that you want to go more towards joint health for your collagen selection as opposed to skin health, you can take Collagen Move. And this actually features our lithothamian calcium that was studied for joint health. Remember we talked about that with calcium? Yes, same calcium, same joint support, um, again, but paired with a beautiful collagen, 10 grams of hydrolyzed collagen in our Collagen Move to help keep you moving. So again, who couldn't use um, mobility these days, right? We just want to keep going. Um, so one of my favorite ingredients that I'm absolutely in love with, and I talked about this earlier with our 55 plus, is astaxanthin, okay? So astaxanthin is an amazing um, nutrient. Um, it's what makes salmon pink. It's what makes flamingos pink. Um, they eat algae or they eat... Um, certain sea life like krill um, are natural sources of astaxanthin and that's what makes them that really rich pink or red vibrant color but what happens is is that you know you would actually have to source a lot of salmon to get astaxanthin from salmon and in new chapter we were like we want to get astaxanthin and is there a better source and there was there's organic algae that is sourced um, and we source it from a closed loop system that uses water that originates in the himalaya mountains and this astaxanthin is actually a protection mechanism for this algae so as sunlight is exposed to the algae, it turns from green to red as a protective measure against the sun damage, right? And that's why it initiates this antioxidant power, right? So how much antioxidant power? So first of all, people throw around that term all the time, right? Antioxidant. They're like, what's an antioxidant? Sure. So we cut an apple in half, right? We open up that apple, we leave it on the counter, what's going to happen? turns brown, right? So what's happening to us is the same thing. We are oxidizing, we are aging. And antioxidants are going to help us because our body is full of antioxidants, hopefully, and also free radicals. And free radicals are some bad mamma jammas. They run around scavenging your body, looking for an electron, and they will leave a path of destruction trying to find their electron, right? But if you see um, a antioxidant, they can supply that electron to the free radical and it quells the free radical and the free radical is no longer harmful, which is fantastic as well. So we understand the need for our antioxidants within our body. So the cool part is, is this astaxanthin is one of the most potent antioxidants. It is 6,000 times more potent of an antioxidant vitamin C. It is 800 times more potent of an antioxidant than CoQ10 and 75 times more potent than alpha lipoic acid. That is the kind of antioxidant power us ladies can use as we're fighting those free radicals. Because guess what? Free radicals can occur from sun damage, they can occur from pollution, they can occur from harmful things like plastics, but guess what? can also occur from healthy things like exercise. Whenever you do damage to your body, you're going to find free radicals. So we definitely need that antioxidant, not just to help when we have free radicals from bad sources, but also necessary free radicals so that our body can recover from things like exercise. So we want to age gracefully and illuminate your natural beauty with astaxanthin. Um, it has that great antioxidant potential. It is um, 
you know, inflammation supportive right down to the cellular level when you're talking about skin. It aids in combating photo aging. It's a natural protection from environmental factors like the sun. And it is a vegetarian alternative to collagen if you decide that you don't want to take collagen. I totally feel you. I understand. I think collagen is amazing, but I also think that you could be taking astaxanthin and experiencing some great results for your skin health as well. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we add into our perfect hair, skin, and nails is called fermented biotin. So this is a fermented nutrient. So vitamin is part, biotin is part of the B vitamins. It's really great for your hair, your skin, your nails. And the cool thing is, is that yes, fermented biotin is an even stronger uh, antioxidant than typical biotin, meaning it is great for your hair, your skin, your nails. And that is what we are trying to take into the future with us. So I'm going to open it up for some questions because at New Chapter, what we really want to give you is nutritional empowerment, right? We want you to feel empowered. We want you to thrive. We want you to do more than just survive. And we are happy to be of service as a quality supplement company that you can rely on, who relies on science to really show the efficaciousness of our products but also because this is our passion. This is what we love to do and, um, and we're proud to do it. So I just want to give you some gratitude from Vermont, which is where I'm from. And uh, this is my team at New Chapter and I love these guys. And we work very, very hard to, uh, to make the supplements that change people's lives and um, hopefully help you to thrive. So I'm going to open it up to some questions and see if we have any. Take a look, Q and A. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions. So um, I'm just gonna say thank you so much for attending today. I super appreciate it. Please feel free to check out our fermented multivitamins. They are fantastic. Again, they're put into a form that your body can recognize, utilize, and they have so many side benefits to them from our herbal complements to, um, you know, again, that 55 plus stimulating neurite outgrowth, helping your brain health overall. And of course, our bone strength take care, which is our calcium, and then our probiotic all flora, our women's probiotic, and of course, our perfect hair, skin, and nails. And you can find these products at Nutters, and they are actually buy one, get one 50% off. And um, you can find them. So head to your closest Nutters store and uh, enjoy finding new chapter. And if you have more questions, I'm sure the staff at Nutters would be happy to help you as well. Or you can always reach out to us at newchapter.com. Again, thank you so much for attending today. It was an absolute blast getting to spend time with you. Have a great one.